forward. So continuing on with unit four, now we're already on lesson eight, or no, sorry, lesson seven. We'll do lesson seven and lesson eight today. <clears throat> Basic subject verb agreement. So we got to have a form of verb that's going to match our subject. Um, and we'll get into that here. So the lesson today, uh, by the time you complete this lesson, you will be able to make the appropriate subject verb agreement. Sometimes that can be a little tricky. Um, we'll take a look here. And we've got a little short audio. Subjects and verbs must agree. That is, a singular subject takes a singular verb, and a plural subject takes a plural verb. This rule always applies, even when other words come between the subject and verb, or when two subjects share the same verb. So it sounds straightforward, and it is. I have a plural verb, or I'm sorry, I have a plural noun, I need a plural verb. I have a singular noun, I need a singular verb. Um, very simple rule. Uh, the problem is when you start diving into that as far as, okay, what is singular? Because um, we talked about some of those collective nouns, which will actually still be singular, right? The team, the team um, runs after class. That's the other kind of tricky thing about plural and singular verbs as opposed to plural and singular nouns. A lot of times a singular verb will actually, we add S to it, right? Whereas a singular noun, right? We don't do that. We only do that with plural nouns in, in those cases. So the same thing, if I say he, um, or, you know, um, they, you know, like I said, they run after class that they is plural, right? Or the uh, kids run after class. Run is a plural verb. He runs after class, singular verb, we add the S. So we'll take a little bit, look more at the rule here. Okay, so uh, rules and example, right? To help us understand subject verb agreement. If two subjects are connected by and. The resulting compound subject takes a plural verb because we're talking about more than one individual or one thing. So Tom and Jan write. Okay, so write is a plural verb. If I just said Tom writes, Singular verb, writes is the singular. Tom and Jan write. Um, if I said the group, right, that's collective noun, but it's singular, writes. If I said the kids write, that's plural. And I hope I don't, you know, confuse you guys here. We'll look at the, the, the table here too and, and get a, a little better understanding. Typically, you, uh, you, it's just that rule again. If you sound it out, it sounds weird. It's probably wrong. So you'll need to update and, and change your verb noun agreement. Sometimes it could be a little tricky though. And then the second rule that says here, if two subjects are connected by or, the verb agrees with the subject closer to the verb because now you're dealing with individual units, not a, a collective. Tom and Jan together are plural. Tom or Jan is singular because we're just dealing with Jan. We're, we're, we're taking that last subject, that last part of the noun to make uh, to make the the verb and subject agree. Uh, likewise, if I said Tom or the kids, right? Then because that second subject is plural, or children. If I said Tom or the children, right? We're using that plural version of the verb. <clears throat> and then here's our roles broken out here. So 
And again, I'll post this on, on Google Classroom for you guys. Uh, singular verb, straightforward, milk spoils easily. Okay, milk, singular, spoils, singular, right? It would be incorrect to say milk spoil easily. And you can see it sounds awkward when you say it, when you hear it. Plural verb, okay? Correctly, these carrots look fresh. Without the S at the end, look is the plural verb to agree with carrots, our plural subject. These carrots look fresh. It's incorrect if you say these carrots looks fresh. You can see again, it sounds weird, right? Those verb and noun or verb and subject do not agree. Uh, again, with plural. So if the subject's connected by and, okay? Now we're talking about more than one, right? We're including more than one individual or one thing. So fish and meat contain protein, contain plural verb as opposed to fish and meat contains protein. That one is a little bit tricky, right? Because meat contains protein alone is correct because you're talking about singular, right? Just singular meat. Fish and meat though, now we're plural because we're talking about two, our subject is two. And then we wanna make sure that we continue to use the singular verb, which is gonna be contain without the S. Flipping that rule from nouns where we add an S for plurals, right? We're flipping it. Uh, and that's why it sounds less awkward, right? Because one lacks that S sound and one has that. Um, so that's how we make the verb and subject agree. Uh, singular subjects connected by or, right? So just like the rule above says, then it depends on what the last part of the subject is, okay? If it's singular, we use a singular verb. If it's plural, we're gonna use a plural verb. Jim or Sarah prepares breakfast on weekends. So Sarah is what we're looking at. If that part of the subject is singular, prepares singular verb. Jim or Sarah prepares breakfast on weekends. It's incorrect to say Jim or Sarah prepare breakfast on weekends. Even though it sounds kind of close, um, but if we said Jim or the children, right? We said Jim or the children, that second part is plural. So we use the plural verb prepare breakfast on weekends. Plural subjects uh, connected by or. So that, of course, we're going to use the plural verb. Just like I said, it says above, whatever is at the end of that or. In this case, they're using both plurals right on both sides of it. Local markets or farm stands feature fresh corn. Singular verb, or I'm sorry, plural verb feature. Local markets feature fresh corn. Farm stands feature fresh corn. Doesn't matter if the or's in there or not, right? We have plurals on both sides there. Uh, incorrectly, right? Local markets or farm stands features fresh corn. It's real, you know, it's close and, it, and it, you know, you get into that situation. That's why, you know, you want to make sure that you take a little time, if you can, to edit, review, make sure, especially with subject and verb, that they agree. Uh, and then the last rule here, singular and plural subjects connected by or. So if the singular or plural, just like we're just saying, uh, depending on which subject is closer to the verb. So whatever basically is coming at the end of that or. The dogs or the cat is in the kitchen, right? Singular verb is singular verb. The dogs or the cat are in the kitchen. Don't want to use that, whatever's after that or. So if I said the dogs or the cats, that's when you'd use are. That's when you'd use the plural verb, okay? So let's take a look at our quiz. All right. And oh, stab myself with my pen just now. Um, let's see here. Content topics. So this chart lists singular and plural forms of the verbs be, have, and do, right? So just like we talk about irregular uh, verbs, um, you get into some different sort of uh, verbs that 
you're not just going to you know simply add s at the end and they don't like it says they do not follow the same rules as other verbs so you know the singular or the verb be the singular form will be am is was the plural are were have same thing we change that to has for the singular and the plural is have do singular does uh, plural do. You will notice, though, that those singular forms of those were uh, uh, verbs, even though they're, they're changing a little bit and we're, we're, we're changing how they're spelled, most of those still end in S as well. Um, you know, is, was, has, does, um, am being the, the exception there. And then, of course, with the plural, you see that there's also no S on the end for our verb. So it's just a matter of kind of keeping it straight and of course, sounding it out and then reasoning through it. If you get in a situation where both kind of sound okay, that's when you need to go back to your role and think about the rule. And let's start with Grace. How about taking care of number one for us? All right. Anna play on the company softball team. Which correction should be made to the sentence? A change play to place. B, change play to play. C, change company to companies. And D, change team to teams. A, change play to place. Right, that one you could really tell. Anna play on the company softball team, right? That sounds really awkward. Uh, we could work through those, but you know, you could see Anna plays on the company softball team, flows a lot better, sounds like we, what we wanna use, right? Anna playing on the company softball team, that you know, doesn't sound good. Um, same thing with, uh, you know, companies to you know, changing company or companies or team to teams. Uh, that's not the subject, right? What the subject of the sentence is, is Anna. So that's what we're dealing with here. And that's again, typically going to be at the beginning of the sentence, not always, um, but, you know, you could typically find the subject near the beginning of a sentence. All right. Correct. Uh, Anna is singular and plays is going to be the singular form. Sounds confusing because we're adding S, but it's still plays. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's it's a little weird. OK. And on to our, but that's what I'm saying. Just, uh, you know, first thing you do is sound it out and see what sounds. If you run into a situation where the two, you have two that sound kind of similar and, and you're not sure, you know, that's where you want to maybe review the, the role. Okay, let's get on to our uh, paragraphs here and our drop down boxes. So office supply refund policy. At Office Supply, we strive to make your shopping experience as convenient and pleasant as possible. We understand that sometimes you may need to return a purchase. Office Supply's refund, refund policies, blank, simple. Um, Milda, let's give this one a try. Um. B. R. Yep. So policy, it's it's basically the office supplies refund policies. That's our subject, right? T kind of taking the whole. Uh, but policies, that plural noun, right, is our um, subject. So we go with the plural verb R. So office supply supplies refund policies are simple. If you paid with cash, Office Supply will refund your purchase with cash if it was bought at the same store. If you paid with a debit card, we will credit your account the same day. If you do not have your receipt, your return is eligible for an in-store credit for the current price of the item you are returning. Office Supply carefully blank returns and in some cases may have to refuse returns without a receipt. Uh, Christiana, would you like to give that one a try? Uh, it's monitors, C. Monitors, yes. 
So, singular, office supply, singular, right? One, uh, you know, one office supply. Carefully monitors, singular verb, returns, and in some cases, may, may returns per outfit. Okay. Most merchandise can be returned within 30 days of purchase, although some products such as open software can be exchanged for another of the same item. Business machines and furniture blank return within 14 days to qualify for a refund or exchange. Tracy, let me try this. Yes. Uh, the furniture uh, require A. A. So require. <clears throat> we have business machines and furniture. They try to trip you up a little bit here, right? Because they put furniture there, which alone would be singular. But we're using and, right? So we're talking about more than one. Business machines and furniture require, just like it requires a plural verb, uh, require return within 14 days to qualify for a refund or exchange. Uh, expired ink or toner cartridges cannot be returned. Unopened and unexpired ink or toner cartridges may be returned at any time for a full refund. Office supply associates or the store manager blank available to help if you have a concern about your return. Grace. Oh. D. D as in is, right? Because we have a plural subject at the beginning. However, that's second part of our subject or the store manager, store manager singular. So we go with the singular verb is. Uh, so associates or the store manager is available to help you if you have a concern about your team, our staff work with you to resolve the issue. Our goal is for you to leave our store satisfied to return to shop with us for a detailed description of our policy, as well as answers to frequently asked questions. Please go to our website at www.officesupply.com. Sound like the guy at the end of all the legalese at the end of the commercials. Um, okay, so that's the quiz there, right? We had A at the top here, play. We changed that to plays to agree with the subject Anna, which is singular. Um, and then R monitors require and is okay and we'll submit there down here she's getting a little frisky get off me okay <clears throat> That's crazy. She's got to pull my earbuds out there. She had her paw wrapped around them. Okay, so there we go. Submit that. And let's go on to the workbook. So again, reiterating that subject of verb agreement means that the verb in a sentence must agree with the subject in a number. That is a singular subject takes a singular verb and a plural subject takes a plural verb. Some sentences have two or more subjects. If the subjects are separated by the word and, they take a plural verb. If the subjects are uh, separated by the word or, the verb must agree with the subject that is closest to the verb. Okay, straightforward rule, but when you get to actually looking at it, sometimes things sound, uh, you know, agreeable either way. Uh, and when you get to complex sentences, you may have more than one subject as well. So let's take a look here. Uh, the text here says, remember <clears throat> that when two subjects are joined by or, uh, the verb agrees with the subject closer, just like we said above here, right? Uh, for example, the students or the teacher eats first. So that's agreeing with teacher as a singular subject. The same rules apply to compound subjects that consist of more than two items. For example, Christy, Antonio, and Ray drive to work every day. So you're still using that and. No matter how many, uh, you know, how how many things come before that, if you're using and, you're going to use that plural verb. 
problems. There's more than one. Uh, and then they restate our uh, same rule there for singulars, plurals, two subjects connected by and, the tree is plural, two subjects connected by or, is singular, uh, unless you have a plural there at the end of the or. Okay. All right, and into our workbook. So here we go. What does it say here? Present tense verbs ending in S or ES are singular. Right? That's what I was talking about why it's a little weird because it kind of flips the rule from nouns. Um, the subject is always a singular noun or pronoun. For example, Luke, the cat, it, he, she, Dr. Lee, science. Do not assume that S indicates a plural verb as it does a plural now, right? So, and we talked about that too with, you know, different forms of, um, you know, uh, it's those irregular nouns and things where you have, uh, you don't have an S at the end, woman uh, or women, men, children, things like that. That's still going to have a plural verb. Okay, so uh, number one, Nilda, would you like to try number one here? Nilda, are you there? All right, we'll come back to her. Christiana, you want to try number one here? <laughs> My cousin live in Cleveland, but good for you know that. Uh, the, Pittsburgh. Okay, Pittsburgh. Steelers. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Which correction should be made to the center? Change the leaf to leaves. Um, B, change leave to leave it. C, change roots to roots. D, change roots to root. Is it A? Yeah. It's C, change roots to root. Our subject here is my cousins, yeah. right? So that's right at the beginning of the sentence and it's, it's plural, more than one cousin. So my cousins live in Cleveland, but root, that's going to be the plural verb root for the Pittsburgh Steelers, um, which is uh, not something you see very often as far as football goes. That's like a huge rivalry, if you don't know. And uh, <laughs> So rooting in Cleveland and not rooting for the Browns is a problem, especially if you're rooting for their like one of their most hated rivals. Uh, but anyway, so my cousin's the subject. Root is the verb that you want to agree with that subject. My cousin's live in Cleveland, but root for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I might talk about a little bit about Pittsburgh when we get to standard English next lesson. <laughs> My wife <Yeah>. liked that. <laughs> All right, so number two. So one was C. Number two, um, Tracy, how about trying number two there? Yes. Number two, uh, Kendall, our uh, sister, drive us to get a snack after practice is over. Which correction should be made to the sentence? A, change, drive to drive. B, change, drive to drive. C, change is to R. D, change is to B. Uh, uh, sister, dress but A. Yeah, A, right? So that we have singular subject, Kendall or her sister. So on either side of that or we have singular, uh, but most importantly, her sister. That's what we want to look at, her sister being singular. So we're going to change that to the singular form of the verb, drives her, Kendall or her sister drives us to get a snack after practice is over. 
So A there. All right. On to our paragraphs. So we're looking at the Deep Shade Tree Company. We're there for the life of your trees. Uh, just like the decorations that you place inside your home, trees blank the outside of your house, personality and character. Um, Grace, what do we want here? D, give. Give. <clears throat> trees, right, subject, give, also plural, trees, give the outside of your house personality and character. Not only do trees make your home more beautiful, they also provide you with cool money saving shade. Um, Deep Shade has been caring for trees for 25 years, working to increase their leafy beauty and lengthen their lifespans. A certified arborist is on staff for consultations and diagnosis of tree diseases. The services we offer include pruning, tree debris and dangerously overhanging limbs, blank siding and shingles. Milda, try that one. Um. C. A. So it's going to be, that's the plural damage. So pruning, so tree debris and dangerously overhanging limbs. Uh, so we have plural subject there, tree debris and overhanging limbs, damage, siding and shingles. That's our plural there, damage. Okay. Um, and uh, okay, so it's, uh, our pruning service can save you thousands of dollars in construction repairs by removing small problem areas before they become bigger ones. In addition, debris can attract pests. For example, many homeowners discover that a possum or squirrel blank the debris to gain access to its home. Um, Christiana. Did be. Uh, but, 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 but where are we? Um, C. So many homeowners discover that a possum or squirrel has used the debris to gain access to their home. Here, we're looking at that. That's singular on either side of the or, possum or squirrel. So squirrel, and we're going to use that singular form right, of have, has used the debris to gain access to its home, All right? See there, tree maintenance. We offer deep fertilization, ball moss removal and web worm treatments. Our policy is to provide your trees with the nutrients they need to be healthy, not to provide chemical treatments that could harm children or pets. Removal of dead or dangerous trees, our experienced staff members blank the trees to see whether they pose risk of falling. Tracy, try that one. Yes. Um, staff member has evaluated A. B. Evaluate, yeah. So <clears throat> you're, uh, that would be correct if we were talking in the past tense. Uh, but our experienced staff members evaluate the trees to see whether they pose a risk. Uh, so staff members uh, are, uh, that's plural, staff members, right? Evaluate is going to also be our plural verb. So staff members evaluate the trees to see whether they pose risk of falling, right? So we had give damage, has used, evaluate, all right? <clears throat> so moving on here to all my readers. Okay, I want to thank you for reading my latest book, all the wrong faces. I blank grateful for your time and the attention you pay to my works. Um, Grace, let's try that one. 
I am grateful. There you go. Singular, right? I, that's a be verb. That's changing that to am. So I am grateful for your time and the attention. That was the one that we talked about that didn't end in S, but it is singular. So I am grateful for your time and the attention you pay to my works. Because of my travel schedule, I find it is often hard for me to connect with individual readers. It seems that many people would like to contact me because they have often asked for my address. I am happy to announce that there is now a way for us to connect. You can email your thoughts and comments about my work through my new website. Although I may <clears throat> not be able to respond to all emails personally, I can promise that I will respond to as many messages as possible. Your comments and feedback, blank, very valuable to me. Um, Nilda, try that one. D. D. R. So your comments and feedback are very valuable to me. Comments and feedback together, right? That's plural, are very valuable to me. That's the plural verb as well. <clears throat> News and information about my books are also going to be on my website, which also will offer links to other books that may interest you. Each month, I will recommend a book or two by some of my favorite authors. You will be able to buy these books directly from the website. Thanks again for reading my newest book and all my others. Your support and your generosity blank a lot to me. Um, Christiana, try that one. Eh, mean and A, yes, so mean. Uh, your support and your generosity, yeah. right? Like again, with a plural subject. Mm. So we have the plural version of mean, which is mean, uh, a lot to me. Please use my new website to write to me directly. Blank forward to hearing from you. Tracy, what do we want here? Uh, I think, uh, I, I, let me mention this. It should be I at the beginning of that sentence. So it should be I blank forward to hearing from you. Okay. I see. Uh, I think I, I, I am looking. I, I, I am. Should I am? So I look B. Yeah, look. Um, yeah, that's just a little glitch there. The I yeah. should be in front of there. I look forward to hearing from you. I would be singular. Um, look forward to, or yeah. So look. Normally I, I use, I am looking forward. I, you're, you're right. It should be I yeah. am looking forward. Yeah, I'm the one messing up now. Uh, so yeah, I am looking forward to hearing from you. Very good. All right. Moving along, but they mess us up there. Some at least, at least today, our multiple choice um, uh, uh, answers were in, in alphabetical order and not all crazy. So uh, we win some and we lose some with Paxson, I guess. <laughs> so uh, the next one here, please mm. cut commercials. Writing mm. this email because I am concerned about the number of commercials being shown mm. on the network during my favorite programs. While watching the nights of our lives on Thursday evening, I counted no fewer than 50 commercials. There were eight separate program interruptions and at least one of them included seven commercials. I think that six or seven commercials blank more than I should have to watch. Grace. Ah, uh, D. D R. I think that six or seven commercials, there's another, uh, right? Commercials, plural, are plural, more than I should have to watch. To make matters worse, annoying pop-ups blank throughout the program. Nilda. Um. B appear yep yep so that's the plural annoying pop-ups 
plural, right? Ups uh, appear, plural verb, throughout the program. These pop-ups usually fill out, uh, fill about a third of the screen with announcements like this one. An all new episode of Hall of Justice, Monday night at nine Eastern time, eight central. This announcement is in addition to the four ads I saw for the show during the traditional commercial breaks. Just how much does your network need to push its own programming? How many different people do you think are tuning in approximately every seven to eight minutes? Most people blank a show all the way through. Uh, Christiana. Okay, D. D, watch, right? People, that is a uh, plural, right? Most people watch, our plural verb, a show all the way through. Do you expect the viewers at 15 minutes after the hour to be different from the viewers watching at five minutes after the hour? There is a reason that more and more people are turning to pay cable channels. I can sit through an entire episode of The Vampire's Girlfriend without watching a single commercial. These interruptions are probably blank viewers to stop buying your sponsor's products. Um, Tracy, how about this one? Uh, they are probably interrupts. Uh, causing a are causing, yep, are right. That's our verb we're looking for there. It's, uh, plural interruptions, plural. These kinds of commercial interruptions are causing viewers to stop buying your sponsor's products. You have no one to blame but yourself. Okay. So there we go, R up here, watch, R causing. And that was the end of basic subject verb agreement. Um, did everybody get our answers there before we move on? You know, the, the simpler sentences, number one, yeah. number one for the workbook was C as in cat. Put that in there too. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, simple sentences. A lot of times, it's very easy to see. It, 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 it you know, it the, the awkwardness will come up. Very, you know, it'll kind of hit you, smack you in the face when when you're using the wrong subject and verb uh, agreement um, or the incorrect. So, you know, the, when it gets to those, um, you know irregular nouns and things uh that's when it gets a little tricky or you know when you see the or or the ands um so it's just that's one of those rules that you sort of have to memorize um remember you know if it's and it's automatically a plural verb if it's or it's the closest one that's that's the part of the rule that uh you're going to encounter where you might have to kind of think about a little bit all right so we'll submit here and we'll move on over to standard English. What does that mean? Okay, so lesson eight, standard English. So let's see here. All right. Um, so define standard English. That's the one thing we'll do today and then use standard English when writing. <clears throat> now let's figure out what they mean by standard English. Here's our audio. A good writer avoids using non-standard or informal language, including slang except for special purposes. Although the English language is always evolving, at any one moment there exists a widely accepted form of English that is written by educated people and considered proper. This accepted form is called Standard English. It includes rules for spelling, grammar, pronunciation, and vocabulary. Some words and constructions that you might hear in spoken language are not considered standard English. For example, the word ain't 
is slang and should be avoided in formal speech and writing. So in, you know, our conversational English, in our, in our conversational language, we get a little lazy. Um, we use slang, we talk fast. So we kind of run things together or, you know, all this kind of happens. Um, and we don't want that to um, bleed into our writing. And you'll know a lot of times I, I talk about formal writing. Um, and that's when you use that standard English. Um, you know, growing up in West Virginia, um, y'all was part of my vocabulary. You all, right? A contraction that doesn't really exist uh, unless you go south of Ohio. You know, all through the south that's used. There's other Appalachian words, you know, and, 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 and things. And I mentioned Pittsburgh earlier. Holy crap. Regional dialects. Uh, are a big part of, you know, why we get in the situation where you have to get back to standard English. Uh, I lived in Pittsburgh. Uh, when I met my wife and, and when we first got married, uh, we lived there for a bunch of years and Pittsburgh ease, I mean, you know, there is a, a local dialect there. <laughs> and um, Particularly among the, you know, the, the younger generations, uh, it's not as prevalent, but like the older part of Generation X and boomers, uh, the, the yinzers, they, they literally call them yinzers because they use this phrase called yens, and it's a contraction for you once or a blend of the word you once, which any way you slice it is not proper English, you know, at least y'all is, is a, you know, contraction for you all and, and it makes sense. Um, but there's other, you know, they, they, they'll throw and that at the end of a sentence. Uh, you know, Yin's going to the game in that. Uh, the other weird phrases, uh, read up your room for cleaning your room or slippy instead of slippery or slick when the roads are, are you know, messy and snowy. And you know, picking on Pittsburgh because I live there, but we get into that any reach in the United States, you go to the New England area, they have their own thing. New York, you know, we've all heard, um, you know, like their accent and things like that. Yeah, you all for, yeah. Um, so it's, and, and, and even out west in, in California, there's parts and it could be very, uh, you know, it, to a very, even like the boroughs in New York, you go to each one and there's a little bit of a different accent there. So and, and the farther south you go, you know, there's there's a southern accent and then there's a southern accent. You know, if you go to the deep south, it's different than, say, a, a, a southern accent in Virginia. Um, the thing about standard English is if you, you know, commit to that when you're writing, nobody's going to know where you're from. Nobody knows how old you are. You know, the only the energy they're giving is to focus on what you're writing about your subject. Um, the, you know, they're not wasting energy on, for one, maybe trying to figure out what you say, and two, spending time thinking about maybe where you're from. Um, so that's part of it, you know, just the overall idea, which is, you know, largely what the, you know, understanding these kind of mechanics and grammar is making your writing clear and not falling into that. This goes right along with <clears throat> frequently confused words because that's why we fall into that is just because of the way we speak um, and blending words together and things that sound the same. That accounts for a lot of these tropes that they're talking about that we get into that are not standard English. And we'll take a look at a lot there. Year. And you're going to see why, because the way they sound, that's a big part of it. And here's what we want to avoid. Um, so their example, ain't, right off the bat, right? That one, you know, it's kind of cringy when you hear it. Um, but it's particularly, of course, you're not going to write that. Uh, ain't, improper connect, uh, contraction. So you replace that with am not, is not, isn't. Uh, if you're using the contraction are not or aren't uh, for the contraction there. Here's one, right? Because we talked about the contraction for should have, could have, would have. But because we hear it, I mentioned this when I'm, you know, writing uh, and I'm thinking about things phonetically, just about the way they sound, it's very easy to make a mistake where you type should have, could have, or would have, where you're using of instead of have. So avoid that. So right, the co co correct construction there is have. So I could have. 
or you use the contraction could have, right, which is the apostrophe V-E, um, but could have of is incorrect. It is not proper. It's not, you know, it's, it's, it's falls out of the, of the language conventions. It is incorrect um, grammar to use of instead of have. Double negatives, that's when you hear a lot and you want to avoid that too, right? So two negatives, right, do not form a, uh, for, uh, do not form a single negation. So you're basically canceling out your negative. Uh, and the example here, she doesn't have no car should be written as she does not have a car, right? Would you put two negatives together in this case, she does not have no, you're basically canceling them out. So it's changing the, the, the form of the sentence. Um, and it, it's, it's kind of sloppy too. There's just too much going on there. It gets to be too wordy. Uh, so she does not have a car or she has no car. You eliminate one of those negatives there. Don't know. Um, I've mentioned, I've picked on my daughter a lot. I don't even get a to no out of her. It's like, Ugh. you know, it's just that 13 year old speak. And I don't hear all that well most of the time anyway. I, I got tinnitus in one ear and I got hearing loss in the other. And I'll ask her, you know, hey, how was school? You know, it's like, is that yes? I was like, do you want, you know, something to eat? Uh, I was, like, is, was that a yes or a no or I don't know? Um, and that's real typical for you know teenagers and stuff. That's part of that speaking fast or kind of getting lazy. Don't know. Gonna, G-O-N-N-A, right, instead of going to. Um, so, you know, like the rule says here, you know, you say, I don't know. Um, and it's only going to get worse for me as I continue to lose my hearing with her. And I'm going to have to make her start enunciating better. Um, <laughs> but as she gets older, I imagine she'll kind of grow out of that as well. Uh, pronoun repetition. So avoid unnecessary pronouns. So uh, write, my sister lives in Boston instead of my sister, she lives in Boston. You only need my sister. You don't have to add that additional pronoun, she. Um, yeah, it's just unnecessary. So uh, another one, supposed to. You need the, to add D. That needs to be past tense. Uh, so when you say, and that's another one because you put that uh, used to, right, is also one that runs together. So it should be uh, U-S-E-D-T-O, used to, same thing, supposed to. You put those sounds together and it, it doesn't, you know, sound like you're sounding out a D next to that T. So when you mean, you know, should have or should, you can write supposed to make sure that the uh, D is added to the end. Same thing with used to. Do not confuse supposed and opposed. Uh, that's another problem there too. Uh, but that would also be, you know, an, an example where you want to make sure that the, the past tense is used. And very easy, that's one in particular that's very easy to fall into, to second guess yourself because we hear it and we don't hear that D sound at the end of use or supposed. Um, so make sure that it's in the, the right tense there, supposed to. Uh, try and go and. Uh, this one you see in a lot of regional dialects as well, but you try to do something, you don't try and do something. So you, you, you go to see someone, you don't go and see someone. That one gets a little tricky, right? Um, but you wanna make sure that you're using to. I go to the movies just like that, um, or I go to see a movie. I don't go and see a movie. And then uh, right there, at the, uh, end again, like I said before, so used to and supposed to, uh, just following up with that, you make sure you use D there at the end of use, used to, 
Um, it's very easy. And again, like I said, that a lot of that has to do because of the way it sounds, the way we run words together, or the way we get a little bit lazy. And then we have to be uh, careful that we don't let that seep into our writing as well. Um, when we review, and that's why we want to make sure that you know, we edit and we review what we write. <clears throat> okay, so let's start our quiz. Our table again here for standard English. Um, and then test taking. So it says some constructions sound normal in casual speech, but are not correct. So learn some of the most common mistakes and then proofread your writing carefully to ensure that you have avoided them. And you know, they do have the most common, commonly found here. That's a good list to start with. Um, I'll see if I can find some more, but that's pretty much what you'll run into. And it's that blending of sounds that makes it difficult sometimes. Okay, so our first question here, let's go to Grace for number one. All right. You should try and get some sleep. Which correction should be made to the sentence? A, chain gets got. B, add off before try. C chain and two two and D have add have before try C chain and two two <laughs> yeah change and to go and they are just what we talked about there so you should try to get some sleep um, and that's another one where we just uh, get kind of lazy with our language or everything and you'll say you know you know you should try and get some sleep. Right. There's not even a two. I don't even make that T sound in there. Try and get some sleep. Uh, and it's just we, you know, and I'll probably say that to, you know, my daughter and, and my wife and, you know, all the time. Uh, so just being kind of cognizant of, of those rules. OK. And on to the paragraphs here. So a city eyesore letter to the editor. Dear editor, it is well past time for the city to do something about the apartment building at the corner of Cornell Street and Third Avenue. Or are people simply blank such situations? Nilda. Nilda? Yes, um, A. A for, so it's D. Remember you use that D on there. So, or are simply used to such situations. So this building has been uh, nearly vacant for the five years that I have lived on Cornell Street. With each year that goes by, the condition of the property gets worse. <clears throat> it is my understanding that the Montgomery County Bank took over the property in 2003 when the landlord did not make the payments. Since that time, all but two of the tenants have left. Paint is peeling off the outside of the building. Weeds are growing in the courtyard. and Many windows are broken or boarded up. The problems blank get fixed without the city's intervening. Christiana. Uh, the problem. Uh, is it B? It's D. Are not are never going. Right. So we're dealing with uh, avoiding the double negative there. So the problems are never going to get fixed without the cities intervening. D, many of us in the neighborhood have tried to get the bank to do something, but we have been ignored. This situation isn't right. I thought that the bank would respond to the phone calls and letters, but no one at the bank will take responsibility. The <laughs> bank does not maintain the property and blank 
in selling it to someone who will. <laughs> Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. What you yeah. do for her? <laughs> uh, the property and the vendors, not the one, and does does take the not take B. A takes no interest. So again, avoiding with our our one thing there. Of course, we can rule out. You know, if you ever see ain't. As, a, as an option, you're going to be able to rule that one out really quick, right? Um, the others are going to be double negatives. So that's a, that's a clue there for you as well. If you get into a situation with a multiple choice or, or drop down, if you see does not and no together or don't and no, um, that's going to give you a clue that you only need the one no or not, right, to avoid a double negative. So A takes no interest in selling it to someone who will. Does anyone with the government care? The blank, quick to find folks in my neighborhood who don't maintain the sidewalk in front of their home. Um, Grace, what do we want here? B, C, D, S. Right. That is avoiding those unnecessary pronouns, right? That's kind of the rule that they're looking at there. Uh, the other ones are too wordy. Um, so we want to make sure that we're being succinct um, and that we eliminate unnecessary words. So the city is quick to find folks in my neighborhood who don't maintain the sidewalks in front of their homes, but it takes no notice of this decaying apartment building. When I contact the city, I get the runaround. Please join me in demanding the city take action. Daniel Goldman. Okay, there's our quiz. We had C for one, use to remember if you see a pose, suppose, um, and you're using two next to it, you're going to have to make sure you have that D on there, used to, even though it, we don't hear that when, when, we, when we pronounce it. Um, used to, and then are never going, so we avoided the double negative there, uh, are never going to get fixed, takes no interest. Uh, that's another, uh, you know, a common phrase, right? You hear <laughs> things like, uh, I could not care less, right? You want to use that. You don't use, I could care less. I could care less means that you do care at least a little bit, um, but I could not care less is the correct phrase. Um, and then city is, right? So we avoided unnecessary pronouns there by adding the city. It is quick to find folks. Just city is. Okay. A lot of this just, you know, sometimes slow down. Think about the, the phrase separating the words. Um, and then making sure, you know, again, it's like, is there too many words here? Uh, is it too verbose? Standard English refers to the agreed upon form of the English language that is written and spoken by educated people. While many people use slang and other forms of informal language and casual speech. And let's, let's be frank here, most people do. Um, standard English should be used in writing and formal speech. For example, in casual speech, a person might say what sounds like, I could have done better or I could have done better. However, in standard English, basically when you are writing it, right? So the correct sentence is written, I could have done better. Uh, avoid common standard English mistakes will help you appear more educated and show that you have command of the language. Um, more so too, it's just the fact, as I mentioned here, it's a level playing field. If I'm using these constructions and avoiding slang, uh, particularly that might be, uh, identified with, you know, like a regional dialect or something like that. The, the reader doesn't know who I am, how old I am, where I come from. They can, they only focus on the words on the page, um, which is, you know, and also the, you're making your, your communication is clear. Um, and, you know, they're, they're not considering, you know, as far as, uh, you know, energy on thinking about, you know, who this person is. 
and there is our standard English and common mistakes again. Um, so, you know, he ain't very tall. We try to avoid that. If you can just eliminate that from your speech. Uh, the other thing, you know, the ones that are a little less about just the way things sound, um, you know, trying to enunciate things and trying to slow down a little bit will help. Uh, and if you could do that in your everyday speech, like the ones like avoiding double negatives or using ain't the easier ones, or even like, a, I don't know, you know, uh, if you can, if you kind of avoid that and think mm -hmm. about enunciating your words, it'll help you uh, with that standard English. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see here. Let's go to the workbook. And then remember to avoid using two negatives, right? That's, that's a big one, double negatives. Uh, when you're expressing a single negative thought, when you negate a negative word, you change the meaning to a positive, right? Um, so use logic to test the meaning of your writing. And just, you know, those, those simple hints. If I have those two negatives close together, you know, making sure I eliminate one. Um, just the other things that you can, you can immediately, you know, check on like when you're using use or oppose, suppose, uh, stuff like that. Uh, and just generally when you're writing, as I mentioned, uh, in formal writing, avoid contractions. Uh, that will also help you as well. So here we go. Uh, number one, let's go to Nilda. Yes, um, I don't know nothing about astronomy. A, change don't to not. B, change nothing to anything. C, change nothing to not anything. D, I know before astronomy. A. B, so here's that double negative again and i know i keep mentioning like don't use contractions they're they're doing <laughs> doing it quite a bit here um but changing that avoids the double negative so if you did you could still even sound it out as i do not know um right so that that even makes it a little more awkward when you say i do not know nothing about astronomy so you're still in that double negative situation changing nothing to anything though you get i do not know anything, or I don't know anything about astronomy. There's a way to do it. All right, so B as a boy. And two, how about Christiana? Why don't you take number two for us? I was supposed to take out the trust. Which correction should be made to the center? A, eliminate two. B change to to ta. C change supposed to suppose. D change supposed to suppose and eliminate. D C so change suppose to supposed. Um, we leave the two right. That's what we keep talking about here. So it's. Uh, those, even though they kind of run together and, and, and you miss that D sound, that's what you uh, supposed to take out the trash. Uh, of course, that's in grammar, to, uh, supposed to, uh, but that's another sort of falling into slang and regional dialect, things like that. So uh, change supposed to supposed, I was supposed to take out the trash. Seeds and cat. Okay, cityguide.com member restaurant review. My wife and I took my sister and her husband to Carmelo's family style restaurante last Saturday. My blank celebrating her 30th birthday. Tracy, what do we want here? Uh, my, my sister was. C. C. My sister was celebrating her 30th birthday. It was our first time dining at Carmelo's since it opened last Friday. I can't believe we waited five months to go. Loved both the food and the atmosphere. 
although we blank made a reservation, we didn't have to wait long for a table. Ah! <clears throat> Grace, you take that one. <laughs> Or you might oh, hey. Should have, have, right? Sounding that fully out. Although we should have made a reservation, we didn't have to wait long for a table. While we waited, we enjoyed ourselves on the restaurant's back deck We're where the restaurant offers jazz performances on Friday and Saturday nights. It was the perfect way to start our night. We like better than some live music before our dinner. Uh, Nilda, what do we want here? Uh, one moment. See? We couldn't have asked for anything better. Yeah, so avoiding double negatives there. We couldn't have asked for anything better than some live music before our dinner. The restaurant is a beautiful space in an old warehouse with high ceilings, big windows overlooking downtown, wood floors and several levels. We got a great booth on one of the upper levels that looked out over the space. All of Carmelo's food is served family style. You order two or three different dishes for the table and then share them. This is a great idea when you have at least four people. We ordered lasagna, spaghetti with meatballs, and chicken piccata. The meatballs were fantastic. Chicken was tender and light with a delicious lemon sauce with just enough garlic. I highly recommend Carmelo's. It is a great choice for a big dinner with lots of friends or for a special hey. occasion the whole family. In fact, I blank else. Um, Christiana. B. B. I never want to go anywhere else. Avoiding the double negative, right? So we had <laughs> sister was, we eliminated any unnecessary pronouns there. Should have, thinking about, you know, sounding things out, not not falling into should to, should have, should have, you know, that idea. Couldn't have asked for anything, avoiding a double negative and never want to go anywhere. Again, avoiding the double negative. <clears throat> Apartment bulletin board, notice Neville's dog walking service. Let's see what Neville's up to. Is your dog suffering because you work long hours every day? Maybe your dog is getting older and is starting to have a few accidents. Do you blank plan your schedule? Uh, around whether you can rush home because Fido needs to be let out. Um, Tracy, what do we want here? Uh, do you try and plan? Try to try to plan. See. There you go. Try to, and that's one. You know, we just got to remember that rule. Try to plan your schedule around whether you can rush home because Fido needs to go out. Let me introduce myself. My name is Neville and I just moved here from Chicago where I blank work for a dog walking service. <coughs> Grace, how about this one? Used to. B, right? B. Yeah. Used to work for a dog walking service. Last week, when I saw how many people sped home from work at lunch, I decided this building needed a dog walker. I would like to offer my services. I'm hoping that many of you will be interested. I'd like to find at least 20 customers or else my business blank chance of succeeding. Um, Nilda, what do we want here? Um. A. B. Will have no. So avoiding that double negative, I'd like to find at least 20 customers or else my business will have no chance of succeeding. I'll bet there are twice that many people in this building who would hire a dog walker if they knew one they could trust. Uh, here's how you can find out more about me and how I work. 
We will start with an interview. I will explain the professional techniques a dog walker uses to handle even the fussiest dogs. You, your dog, and I then will go on a walk together. I am confident that you will, will be impressed. I am even offering to walk your dog for a one-week trial period. And if you don't like my services after that, you don't blank at all. Um, Christiana, what we want here. Um, you don't have to um, pay anything. <laughs> B. B. Right. We're running into that avoiding double negatives a lot <clears throat> in these um, passages here. But yeah, B. Um, you don't. Oh, I'm sorry. D. You don't have to pay anything at all. You don't like my services after that. You don't have to pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. You don't. Sorry, I was looking for the don't. It's right there in front. You don't have to pay anything at all. Very good. All right. So try to, instead of try and, used to, making sure we have that D sound at the end of our use, I suppose, uh, avoiding the double negative again here, we'll have no chance of succeeding, and avoiding the double negative here, have to pay anything at all. <clears throat> and our last one for today. We're flying through these. So, dear state insurance commissioner, I have been struggling with my insurance company for the last year. I called my congressional representative's office today and was told that you might be able to help. Uh, for the last five years, I have been insured by beneficial network. I have always paid my premiums, and until last year, I Blank doctor, um, Tracy, what do we want here? Uh, I, I, I never, I, 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 I never got, I never, see? D, I never had to see a doctor. Yeah. So D there, we start into that double negative situation again. Um, and then the other ones, right? That one had eight. So of course we eliminate that right off the bat. Uh, so D, I never had to see a doctor. Last August, however, I developed a severe pain in my wrist. The pain was so bad that I thought I might have to take time off from my job. I went to my assigned doctor to have him look at my wrist, but he said that I blank see another doctor who was a specialist. Grace, we'll try that one. But he said that I was supposed to see. Supposed to. They throw in that oppose, right? So make sure we understand the difference. If you oppose something, you're in opposition to it. Suppose means you should do something. I was supposed, and we make sure we have the right form there, so we use D, right? I was supposed to see another doctor who was a specialist. So see there, that same day, the receptionist told me where to go and even made my appointment for me later that week. The wrist doctor took some x-rays and gave me a cortisone shot. I came in two more times for shots and I'm happy to say my wrist is better. Two months later, my insurer sent me a bill for over $8,000. Apparently, those shots were considered surgical procedures. In addition, the wrist doctor is out of network, and she blank covered by my insurance policy. Milda, what do we want here? Um, B? Isn't covered by my insurance policy yep or is not so and she isn't covered by my insurance policy i am very confused my <laughs> doctor whom the insurance company assigned to me told me to go to the risk doctor and she took my insurance information mm -hmm. and didn't tell me that i wasn't covered i don't have eight thousand dollars and don't think i should have to pay this bill i'm afraid if i don't blank this soon, the insurance company will report me to the credit agencies. Uh, Christiana, finish up here with you. 
Uh, let's see. Try to resolve, right? Yeah, so avoiding using and there. So try to resolve this soon. The insurance company will report me to the credit agencies. Can you help me? Sincerely, Anita Jackson. So never had to see a doctor, avoiding the double negative, was supposed to make sure we have the right form of suppose or use in a sentence, isn't straightforward. Mm -hmm. And she isn't covered by my insurance policy of warning uh, double negatives. Try to resolve the soon using to instead of and. All right. Um, anybody need any of the answers there? Okay, so um, the what? thing about, you know, check uh, verb agreement or um, make sure I don't end the session here and stop recording my new mantra.